uh, part of our Faculty of Law. Um, oh, the session will be recorded. Thanks, uh, Josie. Um, we have uh, Jared Miller, who is present here. Um, we have Taylor Gillespie. And we have Alix Genier, uh, three students who have been uh, part of our Faculty of uh, law uh, who've been on exchange in the past, obviously prior to the pandemic, uh, who will be sharing their experience uh, on exchanges. Um, they'll be talking about themselves a little bit, uh, tips, and uh, pretty much just the general uh, experience they've uh, experienced when they went on exchange. So before I begin, uh, if you could kindly mute yourselves until the end of the presentation, uh, we will be definitely answering your questions at the end. Uh, you could type your questions in the chat and we will get back to you with the answer uh, towards the end. So uh, don't hesitate. Um, if you prefer asking your question in person, uh, that's also another option. So you may do that option as well. So let's begin with our first slide. Can you see the PowerPoint? Uh, yes, I do. Thanks, okay, Joseph. Perfect. Great. Alors, on va débuter avec un petit sondage. Euh, donc, euh, je voulais savoir, en fait, euh, quelle est votre raison principale de partir en échange si vous décidez euh, de partir en échange, évidemment. Donc, euh, je, I'm going to launch uh, a survey. So, hopefully, this works. It's my first time launching a poll. Um, so, I will launch it right away. So, what would be the main reason for you to go on an exchange? So the results uh, will be completely anonymous and um, uh, confidential. So um, just to have an idea, what would be your reasons to go? Right, we're almost at 100%. <laughs> okay, we have 85% of students who answered, excellent. So I will end poll and I will just uh, share the uh, statistics because when it's recorded, um, uh, future students who will be watching this later on won't see the statistics. So I will say it out loud. Um, so for learning a new language, we have 10% of students who uh, pick that choice. Uh, taking a different course is not offered by the faculty, uh, 17%, uh, which is a very good reason as well to go on exchange. Making new connections, um, learning, discovering a new culture is also a very popular choice, 30%. All of the above, uh, a big 37%, uh, which pretty much is all positive uh, things when you think about going on exchange. Thank you everyone for participating. Um, so I will share the results with all of you so you could have an idea. So these are the results. So all of the above is the winner. So I'm glad there is a, a big um, uh, outpour of interest of going on an exchange, which is great. Uh, so I'll stop sharing the poll. Uh, perfect. So next slide for the agenda of today's session. So um, the number one, uh, um, sorry, the number one item we're going to talk about is uh, the reason why uh, you would be interested to go on an exchange. Um, Number two, uh, it's the eligibility requirements. So making sure you have fulfilled the requirements before applying to go on an exchange. Number three, exchange on your last semester. Uh, this is actually a very popular option uh, for students uh, doing a three and a half uh, year duration. Uh, students decide to go on an exchange on their last term. So we will be looking at uh, a few important uh, items uh, to make sure you are eligible to go on your uh, on your last term. Number four, how to submit your application, um, the step by step process to ensure you have the, some, all the all the required documents needed for your application. Uh, number five, the application timeline. Uh, pay attention to important deadlines when preparing your exchange application. 
And lastly, but not least, we have our Q&A uh, question and answers we'll be looking to at the end of the presentation. So again, uh, don't hesitate to write them down on your chat uh, and we will be answering them uh, hopefully um, at uh, the earliest possible. <laughs> so uh, the following slide, so that's the number one. The main reason we are all asking for is why should you consider going on an exchange? Well, number one, uh, the Faculty of Law has a very strong exchange program consisting of partnerships with leading institutions around the world, such as in Australia, Singapore, and the United Kingdom. Approximately 25% of our students participate in exchange uh, during their BCL JD program. So following slide. Of course, there are other um, essential reasons why you should certainly uh, consider to go uh, study abroad. Um, number one, uh, the possibility to experience higher standard of education. Uh, studying abroad means you could take advantage of enrolling in courses offered by the world's top ranking universities with highly regarded education systems, such as King's College London and United Kingdom, National University of Singapore in Singapore and University of Melbourne in Australia. Uh, these institutions are very uh, highly known uh, with their law program. Number two, you'll have the chance to become immersed in a new culture. For instance, you'll be able to try new foods, hear traditional music, participate at local activities, and explore everything else your host country has to offer. Number three, the opportunity to widen your network, make lifelong connections and meaningful relationships. Meeting students from across the globe could also create opportunities to work for or with one another in the future. Number four, to increase your independence and self-confidence as you tackle challenges in a new environment. Leaving your familiar surrounding encourages you to become more independent very quickly as you are responsible for yourself and your education. This independence is an asset that you'll carry on throughout your life. Number five, which is, I, I believe, my probably my favorite point, is um, it's a unique experience. I mean, it will make a positive impact on your life and career. As the saying goes, and I have to say it's one of my favorite sayings, uh, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the, by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So as a summary of all of this, step out of your comfort zone. That's usually when the magic happens. So the following slide. Um, donc, euh, au niveau des critères d'admissibilité, euh, vous devez avoir complété les deux premières années de votre programme BCL-JD. Donc, quand vous allez en échange, vous devez être en troisième ou quatrième année. La moyenne pondérée cumulative doit être au moins de 2,70. Donc, il faut prendre ça en vigueur euh, quand vous décidez d'appliquer pour un échange. Vous devez prendre un minimum de 12 jusqu'à un maximum de 15 crédits électifs pour votre échange. Et dans ces 15 crédits, vous pouvez toujours prendre 6 crédits pardon, qui peuvent être consacrés à des cours non-law. Euh, il faudrait aussi euh, compléter un audit de diplôme, un euh, degree audit, et indiquer tous les cours que vous avez déjà pris. Vous pouvez aussi toujours me demander euh, pour qu'on puisse vérifier ensemble votre audit de diplôme pour assurer que vous êtes bien admissible pour partir en échange. Euh, le formulaire pour le degree audit se retrouve sur notre site web euh, sous la rubrique euh, SAO Forms. La date d'échéance de soumettre votre applica application sur Minerva est euh, 12-20 et le 14 janvier à 23h59. Euh, je parlerai de ceci un peu plus tard euh, au niveau des étapes euh, pour les applications, euh, un peu plus tard lors de notre présentation. Um, so, exchange on your last semester. Um, as I mentioned, it's a very popular option uh, when students um, decide to uh, go on exchange on their last term. 
Uh, keep in mind, there are a few items that you need to um, consider when you go on exchange on your last term. Uh, so as I mentioned before, uh, you could only take a minimum of 12 credits to a maximum of 15 credits uh, to go on exchange. And this is a very, uh, it's a pretty uh, strict um, requirement. So really you have to keep in mind. Um, so when I say uh, 12 to 15 credits, uh, it has to be electives. So that means all your required and complementary courses must be completed. So when you complete your degree audit, you have to make sure all your civil basket courses are, are um, completed and your writing requirement. Uh, so that's why I highly suggest you to complete a degree audit, send it to me beforehand to make sure you are eligible uh, to go on exchange on your last term. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so um, we receive uh, your transcript, well, sorry, we must receive your transcript before uh, your graduation, graduation deadline. So it's a very important detail because um, if you do uh, decide to go on exchange on your last term, uh, you have to make sure you're able to get your final grades uh, before your graduation uh, deadline. So for fall graduation, it's mid-January and winter graduation, it's uh, mid-May. So when you choose your, uh, um, your host institution, uh, please make sure uh, you verify the term dates and the dates for their assessments uh, to make sure we have um, these final grades on time. Um, so, uh, what was the other one? Ah, oui. Alors, uh, pas de crédit McGill de term essay pendant votre, votre trimestre en échange. Uh, so, the writing requirement, uh, uh, the writing requirement must be done prior to one exchange. So, you can't do a term essay while you go on exchange. And uh, lastly, very important, you must um, you must uh, pass all your, your courses enabled to, uh, to go on, on exchange. So next slide, it's the career considerations. So you may be wondering about your ability to participate in organized recruitment if you're going away on exchange during your third year. Students completing the program in three and a half or four years often participate in organized recruitment in their third year. The US, Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, and East Coast recruitment takes place in the fall, whereas the Ottawa recruitment and Montreal course au stage takes place in the winter. Students participating in a recruitment in the fall may also submit few applications to Montreal employers in a process known as the special fall recruitment. We cannot yet predict if employers will go back in person and interviews next year, but this shouldn't prevent you from going on an exchange. Even before the pandemic, employers did accommodate a few students by allowing them to interview on the phone through Skype while they were on, away on exchange. In all likelihood, it should be easier to do so now. That being said, it may be simpler to first decide whether you wish to participate in organized recruitment, and if so, to choose the right semester to go on exchange accordingly. Le fait de partir en échange est bien sûr une opportunité de voyager, mais cela peut être aussi une opportunité de développement de carrière. Vous pouvez postuler pour une université qui offre des cours spécialisés qui ne sont pas nécessairement disponibles à McGill, par exemple, des cours, des cours sur le fonctionnement de l'Union européenne. Vous, vous pouvez aussi en profiter pour tisser des liens et élargir votre réseau. C'est également une opportunité de découvrir, découvrir le marché de l'emploi local, de trouver un stage d'été, du barreau, etc. Pour toute question à ce sujet, n'hésitez pas à communiquer avec le CDO. You can make an appointment with Sophie or Stacy through 1220 or send an email to cdo.law at mcgill.ca uh, for uh, general inquiries. So research partner universities. Um, this is a very uh, important slide because uh, often we, um, without, without uh, researching in depth our partner universities, 
um, students assume that um, the partner university you would like to go on exchange suits your needs. Uh, that's why I find it's very important to actually research uh, very in-depthly uh, if it's a university that fulfills uh, uh, your needs, basically. So uh, before going on exchange, I highly recommend uh, you to look on our website uh, for our law partner universities, which you will see uh, on our website, uh, there are a number of spots of exchange for law students per, uh, per university. And per university, you'll see the spots are, are different. So um, it's a good idea um, after this presentation, uh, you could check on our website to see um, the, specific, the specific spots for each university that has to offer. Uh, the, um, so, excuse me, the complete list of McGill uh, partners institu institutions may be found on our McGill Abroad website. Um, you are also welcome to apply for an exchange there. Um, and they have a, a, lot, a very long list of universities, uh, but you have to make sure that they have a law faculty uh, in order to apply. Um, but keep in mind that even if they have a faculty of law, a nomination is not guaranteed that they're accepting uh, law students. So as I mentioned before, research, 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 um, before you start your application process, what does that mean? Uh, you have to verify the institution fact, fact sheet uh, to make sure that the information on outgoing exchanges and on McGill abroad side um, is uh, suitable for your needs. And not only that, is you have to check the language of instruction, uh, if there are enough courses that are offered in English. Um, also make sure your choices offer um, if you're the courses that you are, that you choose uh, are um, that will count towards your program, and uh, lastly but not least, um, some institutions uh, require a slight higher CGPA, um, and but all this information is again on our website or on the McGill Abroad website. Um, so we will put the links on the in the chat uh, at some point towards uh, the end of the presentation. So the next slide is planifier votre budget. So of course, when you go on exchange, uh, you have to planify your, um, your budget. Uh, it is a budget. Uh, unfortunately, traveling uh, requires to think a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, items that uh, unfortunately uh, will require a little bit more monetary. Uh, <laughs> um, so keep in mind the charges. So the tuition, like I said, uh, it's 15 McGill credits. Um, so even if you take less credits to go on exchange, for instance, you're taking 12 credits, uh, you would still need to pay um, the, the, to, the, um, the total of 15 credits. Uh, so this is um, a rule that uh, regardless of the number of credits you're taking, uh, you have to pay for a 15 credit uh, while you go on exchange. Uh, this is a part of terms and conditions uh, when students accept when they go on exchange. So uh, that's something you have to keep in mind. Um, there is a fee, there's an application fee, it's $150 um, and it's non-refundable. Um, but you know, during this pandemic, it, it was an exceptional situation. So uh, obviously uh, McGill you know, was lenient to, to provide a refund because this was an, an out of ordinary situation. But uh, as a general rule, uh, it's non-refundable. Um, so as I mentioned, there are costs um, that you have to keep in mind when you go on exchange. Uh, there is accommodation, uh, you need your flight to go and to come back. Um, you know, the activities, leisures that you want to be part of. Um, you know, uh, there is also um, your books or certain other um, costs that are related to your education. Uh, and there's the fluctuating exchange rates. So little details, but things that you do have to keep in mind uh, before I'm going on exchange is, um, uh, you know, do I have enough uh, of a budget? Uh, to make sure you will be at ease when you're on exchange. Uh, luckily, uh, we have um, uh, McGill funding opportunities that could uh, provide aid when you go on exchange. Uh, so because uh, these costs could be a burden for students, so 
uh, there are definitely opportunities that you might be eligible for. Uh, some of them, uh, I will mention it, but the whole, um, I guess, eligibility details are provided on our website. So there's the mobility bursary for exchanges, uh, the scholarships and student aid, external prizes and contents, and McGill funding opportunities. Uh, so uh, as from experience, I know a lot of students who have um, benefited from these funding opportunities. So uh, this will definitely uh, remove some um, weight off your shoulders uh, while you go on exchange. So um, that's a very important uh, information. I think that students should be aware that uh, um, if you need any financial assistance, uh, it exists uh, within McGill. So um, all the links are, are, will be provided uh, when this uh, presentation actually is uploaded on our website later on, uh, the links should work on the slides. So uh, you have that as a, um, a backup information. So for the next slide, it's uh, the study away. So a lot of students uh, do ask, um, what's the difference between study away and exchanges? Um, to be honest, it's, it's pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference is um, instead of paying uh, the McGill fees, um, you're going to have to pay the host institution fees. So that might be a little bit more expensive on your plate. Uh, but the general principle is, is very similar. Oh, I apologize for this. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, uh, it is uh, very similar. Uh, the only difference is the fee that you may have to pay a little bit more. Um, and also uh, another very important detail, um, the arrangements uh, has to be done um, from the student with the host institution. So we're not as part, uh, we're not as um, actively involved with, um, uh, with your partnership with your host institution. Um, so it's a little bit more, the organization part, it's more on you. Uh, but of course, uh, we will be involved uh, when it comes to uh, approving the courses. Uh, but keep in mind, when you do decide to go on a study away, uh, what does that mean? It's that um, you choose a university that is not part of our um, uh, law-specific agreements, uh, bilater bilateral agreements, uh, and it's not part of the McGill abroad um, institution list. So uh, once you choose a university, you have to make sure it's ranked and it, you have to make sure that there is an actual law program. Um, so uh, keep in mind that even yeah. if you, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, keep in mind that um, this is something that it's approval only. So even if you wanna go to a certain institution, uh, it has to be approved by the faculty first. So uh, you will see uh, later on, uh, there is an application process for study away as in for exchanges. Uh, so you would have to provide your academic and personal reasons why you choose to go to this institution uh, for a study away. Um, and there's also the possibility of applying to two, um, to study away and for an exchange, but that's two separate applications. So you have to keep in mind for that as well. So the following slide. Um, so this is when you actually decide where you wanna go. Uh, you've uh, made sure you have fulfilled the requirements. You have completed your degree audit. Um, so now uh, it's when you're ready to apply. So there are three simple steps. Uh, number one, uh, it's um, the Minerva application. So uh, you would have to log into your Minerva account, uh, choose exchange study way application. And there are uh, forms with uh, questions. You have to upload the information. Uh, so you have to make sure obviously to submit all this information prior to the deadline. And number two, uh, it's the 1220 application where um, you have to click on OCI job listing, select exchanges for 2022, 2023. Um, then you would have to upload uh, three supporting documentations, uh, your most updated uh, CV, uh, academic, um, your degree, completed degree audit form of all courses you have completed and your uh, proof of language profic proficiency form. 
And again, these all, all these um, uh, process has to be done prior uh, to the deadline, which is January 14th um, at 11.59 p.m., both on Minerva and on 12.20. So the first, uh, as I mentioned, it's the Minerva application. Um, it's pretty straightforward as in that you log into your Minerva uh, under student and then you click on student records menu, you will see the uh, exchange study away menu. Um, so again, it depends if you're going on exchange or study away, uh, then you would click, click on the appropriate um, menu. So you could indicate up to four institutions. Uh, so keep in that mind for that. Um, and number three, which is a, a very, uh, very important um, uh, item, it's a, a statement for each school, uh, you have to list your reasons why you want to go on exchange. Um, number four, uh, you're, if you're exchanging with someone within the faculty, uh, please indicate it at the top of your statement. Uh, because we have had uh, in the past students deciding to go uh, on an exchange with their with their friend within uh, the faculty. So please indicate that information. Number five, it's to indicate uh, the term you would like to go on exchange, whether it's fall or the winter. Um, as a rule, we've noticed a popular uh, option is for the fall. <laughs> uh, number six is to indicate the tentative course selection. So there is a section where you would have to indicate all the all the courses you would like to take. And uh, number seven, uh, just to keep in mind that this whole exchange study way application is an internal process. So uh, it's it's on we basically uh, well us and service point at McGill uh, de deals with this application process. So um, as I mentioned, uh, for the application process, yes, there is the Minerva side, but there's also the 1220 application uh, part. Uh, so I believe you all have access to 1220. Um, so once you're logged in, uh, you would need to select OCI job listing, click on exchanges 2022-2023, um, upload your up-to-date CV, complete your degree audit, um, showing all your credits that you have completed, um, even um, uh, what I uh, do suggest uh, is um, to also indicate courses that uh, you will take eventually if you're coming back, uh, if you're coming back from exchange, just to make sure that um, you will not be taking any uh, requirement courses over there, because as I mentioned, it could only be uh, elective courses when you go on exchange. Um, and uh, regarding your proof of language proficiency form, uh, that's only required if you'll be studying uh, in a language other than English or French, and you are unable to provide proof of your proficiency in the language of the host institution. Um, but please submit one form per university choice if the main language of instruction at the university is not English or French. Lastly, uh, regarding the application is the deadline. Uh, so again, I cannot emphasize the deadline. I think I mentioned it a few times, but yes, it is Friday, January 14th at 11.59 p.m. And this goes for the Minerva and for 12.20 uh, when it comes to the applications. Um, I wanna also emphasize that this is not a first come uh, first serve basis, which means that I will not, we will not consider the first uh, applications as more important than the one submitted on January 13th. We will be reviewing all ap applications equally um, at the end of the deadline. So uh, I wanna make that very, very clear. Um, and also, unfortunately, we cannot accept any uh, submissions after the deadline. So uh, if you need a change after the deadline, unfortunately, um, that is not possible. So uh, please make sure everything is written down uh, uh, correctly before you click on submit. So the timeline, uh, this is a very uh, common question. Uh, when you apply for exchange, you wanna know uh, when you will find out the result. 
Donc, au niveau du résultat, euh, en fait, euh, je n'aime pas dire vraiment des dates précises quand est-ce que vous allez avoir les résultats, mais je peux donner plus ou moins euh, une période que vous pouvez euh, envisager d'avoir euh, votre résultat pour votre application. Donc, ça serait à peu près euh, fin janvier, début février 2022. Euh, le SAE vous informera du résultat de votre application. Euh, dès que vous aurez euh, votre euh, résultat, euh, vous acceptez ou déclinez votre nomination sur Minerva. Euh, par la suite, euh, le SAE vous enverra plus tard des informations supplémentaires concernant votre candidature à l'établissement accueil. Et ensuite, euh, vous, vous postulez à l'institution partenaire avant la date limite. Euh, juste pour vous euh, mentionner que la date limite euh, varie entre euh, institutions. Donc, euh, ces informations, on va vous l'envoyer. Donc, ne vous en faites pas. Euh, euh, ça, c'est euh, dans nos mains. Donc, euh, ça, c'est une étape à la fois. So, the timeline continued because that was um, for the SAO, but uh, when students do apply uh, for um, institutions that are part of the McGill abroad list, Uh, that's considered the general partner nominations. So that automatically means it goes to a service point lottery. Uh, so end of January, uh, approximately end of January 2022, we will let you know if you will be entered in the lottery. Um, early February 2022, lottery will be run by service point for general partners. Uh, which that means service point will distribute spaces fairly across all faculties by a random randomized list so it will it will be a fair process um, in mid-february 2022 students will be informed of the results of the lottery a nomination is not a guarantee that the host in institutions law school will accept your application so always keep that in mind that um, it's not an automatic um, acceptance uh, from the uh, host institution. Uh, so, um, but I, I want to also emphasize that, um, that uh, you, will, you will have your choices, but you will always have another choice. It's not something that um, if your first choice is not selected, um, you won't have any other op op possibilities. Uh, whether it's us or service point, uh, we will make sure you have another option uh, pretty much. Uh, so I just want to make sure that's, uh, that message is across. Um, so lastly, uh, we will only uh, mention the results for fall 2022. Uh, the decisions for winter 2023 application will be confirmed uh, later in the summer. So I'm very pleased uh, today, actually, uh, <laughs> that we have uh, three students uh, who are present today. Um, Jared Miller, Taylor Gillespie, and Alex Genier. Um, so they were um, previous uh, McGill Law students. And obviously, they had the opportunity to go on exchange uh, prior to this uh, unfortunate situation of the pandemic. Uh, so each uh, each student, well, each previous student will, will be discussing uh, their experience while going on exchange by giving a brief introduction and uh, discussing their um, exchange uh, experience. So, uh, Jared, we'll we'll start with you. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Astrid. <laughs> Thank Very you. interesting, honestly. I don't oh, know, of course. No, I, I remember doing this as a student and uh, it's actually extremely helpful. Like it may seem like it goes by really fast, and, but you know, having this recorded and being able to come back to this, it really helped me uh, when I was a student too. Uh, and so, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jared Miller. Uh, I graduated in 2019. Uh, my final semester actually was on exchange, which was uh, the fall of 2019. So just as COVID-19 was starting worldwide. <laughs> Um, and that's, uh, yeah, so I graduated in 2019. Uh, I'm currently an articling student for the federal government in uh, the Department of Canadian Heritage. And I, uh, right now, I'm doing mostly IP law with like a twist on cultural heritage and indigenous protection of arts and culture. So it's very interesting, but uh, <laughs> that aside, um, the exchange was something that I uh, came into McGill Law knowing that I wanted to do. I wasn't really uh, able to get in that in my undergrad, unfortunately. Uh, and so as a result, I knew that I wanted to do it when I was at law, uh, in law school. 
Um, and what I ended up doing, where I ended up going was uh, the University of Trento in Northern Italy. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, and I'll say this, it's a very important thing that has been mentioned uh, uh, about being kind of being flexible uh, about your options and your choices that you are going to get. And so my story about how I ended up getting uh, my exchange is a little bit uh, unique in that I applied two years in a row. Uh, and the first year that I applied, uh, my third year of law school, uh, I ended up getting into my second choice school, which was uh, University of Fudan in, uh, in China. And uh, unfortunately, uh, as a result of uh, my own uh, misplanning, uh, I wasn't able to uh, accept that exchange because uh, I had a, a, um, a course that I needed to complete still with the university of required course. Um, and so because of that, I and because of the, only, the time that it would have been scheduled uh, being during my exchange, I wasn't able to accept that option. Uh, so, you know, unfortunate as it was, I applied again the next year and I ended up uh, putting my top three uh, and uh, Trento actually wasn't even one of those top three. Uh, I got a email uh, in the fall uh, back then it was or it might have been in the summer uh, back then uh, noting that hey unfortunately there were none, none of the spots were able to take you uh, in because I had applied for a number of schools that had a, a higher GPA requirement uh, than I had uh, and as a result it wasn't able to get taken into any of those schools but it was given to me a small uh, selection of schools that were still available and um, my partner actually had gone to the University of Trento because uh, her family was from there originally uh, in that region of Italy. Uh, and uh, she had done her exchange there. And so I knew the school and I knew the region. And uh, it was something that was really uh, compelling uh, to me and ended up being a really lovely experience. Um, my biggest tip right off the bat, I guess, would be that, be flexible. Uh, and it's really worth carrying that into your exchange experience as well. Uh, you're going to probably come across some frustrating things, whether it's uh, courses or uh, the bureaucracy uh, of where you are or uh, you know what's available to you, what's not. Uh, dealing with the school bureaucracy, uh, it's not extremely easy. It's easy on no one's end, neither the faculty nor uh, the faculty of the school that you're going to. Um, and it's so yeah, having that flexibility and being able to kind of just uh, roll with the punches as they come. Uh, it'll help you a lot in no matter where you end up, uh, both in life and in these uh, the school exchange, but uh, extremely worthwhile to do it and uh, would uh, you know, I, I would say that it was one of the defining moments of my uh, law school experience uh, because it helps me really like encapsulate a lot of the knowledge that I had from McGill previously. Uh, and I'll just, I'll, I'll end quickly, but uh, for example, in that example that I want to give is that um, I took a course called uh, Comparative Legal Analysis while I was in uh, at the University of Toronto. And uh, in that course, uh, I had a really great opportunity to put together a lot of the knowledge that I had had from both the civil and common uh, trans systemic system that we have at McGill, but also in some other cool courses that I'd taken throughout my time in school, uh, Talmudic law and uh, Islamic law. Um, and so extremely, extremely worthwhile. Um, I, I see a quick question there um, about language, uh, and it is extremely easy to take courses both in English and uh, Italian. So if you know the language of the country that you're going to, uh, you can do this. Uh, I was lucky enough to have some of the base in the language as well. So I was able to take one of my courses in the language, one that I felt comfortable in, uh, and I, the majority of the other my courses were in English. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it there and I'll pass it along to whomever's next, but uh, happy to answer any questions at the end as well or to connect via email. Thank you so much, Jared. And I, I think what you uh, mentioned about flexibility, it is a very, uh, very key uh, item to think about because uh, I know I know students have expectations and obviously having a number one uh, uh, choice and having a second or third choice, for example, let's say it, it, it could actually be a good thing at the end because it's, it's sometimes you uh, encounter new situation that you would have never expected. So I, I'm glad uh, that you shared your experience uh, to our students. Uh, so we will go now with Taylor uh, Gillespie. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. Awesome, uh, no problem, I think that. Uh, so my name is Taylor Gillespie. I'm currently a, uh, an associate at Case in New York in the International Arbitration Group. And um, I was just like, I was in Jared's class and, and just like Jared, I went on exchange in December of 2019, which was my last semester. And just a note on that, I think that if I would 100% recommend that you do that, it's, uh, it's a great way to end law school. And it's a great way to, um, to kind of have a, have a change after three years at, at McGill. Uh, 
So I um, I went to Brazil. I went to FGV in Rio de Janeiro, which uh, which ended up being my favorite city that I've ever been in. I'm 100 go back there. Uh, and the reason I, I picked it essentially, and shout out to you, 10% that chose new language, learn a new language. Is I speak Spanish already, and I figured, you know what, Spanish is close enough to Portuguese, and uh, I'll go to Brazil and, and, and learn Portuguese and take all my classes there and, and have a great time. Um, although it's uh, to be honest, it's Portuguese is not that similar to Spanish. So if anybody's in that boat, like it's uh, it's going to be a lot harder than you imagine. At least for me, it was on the first day when I understood nothing that was said, and so it was an uphill battle, but. Um, but overall, an, an awesome experience. And it's just like kind of, you know, to touch on what Jared said, you get different exposure to diff different legal systems and you get to kind of get a, a I don't know, a, a whole new different experience. And, and that I, was exactly what I was looking for. I also knew that I wanted to do that before uh, going to McGill. And in terms, of, uh, in terms of tips, I think just to reiterate what Jared said about being flexible, because it's, it's crucial. It's crucial to, to know in advance or as best you can what you're going to do to, um, to to graduate and in terms of courses and credits and especially those deadlines. Like I remember Astrid mentioned in the presentation that you have to make sure you have all your credits by the graduation date. And that for me, like it was hard. It was I really had to push on the administration to get that done. And it was, I think, like the day of or the day before that I found out that I should be graduating. So so that was uh, so that was a little bit of a headache that I could have taken some of the stress out if I was a little more proactive in anticipation of that. Um, another thing too with the languages, FGV, for example, is a court is a university that has courses in English and and Portuguese. So I I, I initially when I applied, I figured okay, there's going to be some people that apply that want to do just English. And when I got there, I was the only Canadian that was there, but there were many Europeans there that banked on the fact that there would be enough courses in English, but there weren't to fill a full a full credit list. So if you are in the group that maybe wants to go to Brazil or any of these places that has they have English classes, make sure that they offer enough English classes and, and not just the ones in the in the local language. Um, what else did I write down? Uh, in terms of one thing I wanted to mention in terms of jobs, it hasn't really been brought up yet. Um, when I was doing OCIs and things like that, I, I went, so I, I didn't know that I had a job by the time that I applied. And so it was a little bit, I thought it was a little bit risky, but I figured, you know what, whatever, I'll go in exchange and then I might be away if I have to do OCIs during that time. But the timing ended up working out well. And I think that there's a lot to be said about about having that exchange on your resume. Like, I think that it does look really good just because it shows that you're, you know, able to uh, to be independent and you want to try new things and that kind of thing, and which I think voted well for me at least. And, and same with the network. Like I still am in contact with lots of people that I worked with. I might be going down to FGV to be teaching a course. So that might be pretty cool. And that wouldn't have happened if I didn't go on exchange. Um, and I think, so, so overall, I mean, that, that's kind of been my experience. Uh, that was my experience on exchange. And, and it was absolutely a highlight if, of my law school experience. And, and, and I totally recommend that everybody else do the same. Thank you so much, Taylor. And I agree with you. I've been to Rio and it's one of my top, uh, top destinations. So I completely understand uh, your feeling about it. So thank you, Taylor, for sharing. Um, so uh, let's move on with uh, Alex Genier. Bonjour, Alex. Bienvenue. <rire> Merci. Euh, en fait, je trouve ça pro probablement qu'on est dans la dernière cohorte là, à avoir pu euh, faire des échanges parce que Jared Taylor et moi, on, on est tous dans la même euh, année. Euh, moi aussi, j'ai profité de... En fait, ben, je m'appelle Alex, j'ai gradué donc, en 2019 à l'été. J'ai fait mon échange, donc mon dernier été. J'ai fait mon, mon bac là, en trois ans. Donc, pour ceux qui sont plus pressés, ça peut être un avantage aussi de profiter de, des étés pour faire... Euh, pour avancer dans votre cursus puis faire des cours ailleurs. Euh, je pratique actuellement euh, au Centre de justice de proximité du Grand Montréal, donc c'est au euh, service de prémédiation puis en information juridique. Euh, J'ai fait un échange donc à l'été 2019 euh, au Vermont Law School, donc pas très exotique, euh, mais, euh, mais pour moi c'était vraiment intéressant parce que c'est une faculté de droit qui se spécialise en fait en droit de l'environnement et en droit agricole, qui sont ma, mes, mes, mes champs d'intérêt principaux. Donc, ça a été une occasion pour moi de vraiment pouvoir aller chercher ce qu'on parlait, là, aller chercher comme une expertise euh, dans un domaine de droit plus précis. Euh, 
Donc, ça a été vraiment intéressant. Puis, c'était la, la méthode, de, les cours d'été étaient sur des sessions de deux semaines. Donc, c'était condensé deux semaines, un cours, deux semaines, un cours. Donc, ça, c'était vraiment chouette. Puis, c'était beaucoup des étudiants, là. En fait, il n'y avait, y avait pas vraiment d'étudiants étrangers. Euh, c'était beaucoup des gens de euh, l'école de droit qui est de, de, du Vermont Law School qui étaient là. Euh, j'avais fait aussi... Euh, je pense pour moi, l'exotisme était moins important. J'avais fait un échange euh, dans mon premier bac en Norvège où j'avais pris des cours de norvégien. Donc, l'aspect immersion culturelle, euh, pour moi, ce n'était pas nécessairement euh, sur la liste, mais je pense que ça, ça a une valeur en soi. Euh, puis, effectivement, puis il y avait aussi, euh, je vais le mentionner parce que je pense que c'est un autre beau programme de McGill, mais il y a aussi le Human Rights Internship Program, euh, qui est une belle opportunité également de, de voyager, de voir autre chose, de de rencontrer d'autres cultures, puis de, de faire des belles découvertes là, en termes, de, en termes de, de, de ce qui se passe ailleurs. Euh, peut-être deux petites choses en terminant. Euh, j'ai gradué à l'été. Euh, je mettrai une attention particulière aussi au, au timeline pour le barreau, l'admission au barreau. Euh, pour moi, ça a été compliqué là, d'obtenir mes... mes, mes, résum- mes transcripts à temps. Euh, donc, peut-être quand on parlait de planification de cours, de deadline, de tout ça, de graduation, c'est, c'est vraiment important de regarder ça. Puis le dernier conseil que, que je ferais, en fait, c'est habiter, trouver des appartements, habiter avec des gens dans des colocations, là, c'est vraiment le fun de, de pouvoir, je trouve que ça ajoute beaucoup plus que de, d'habiter en résidence. Donc, si vous avez l'occasion, trouvez-vous des colocs qui sont euh, des locals. Donc, voilà. Merci beaucoup, euh, Alex. Merci infiniment. Euh, je suis d'accord avec vous quand on côtoie avec les gens du, euh, du peuple. Euh, je crois qu'on on immerse encore plus euh, dans, leur, euh, dans l'environnement. Donc, euh, euh, j'a, j'apprécie beaucoup pour euh, vos conseils. Uh, Jared, as well, and Taylor, thank you so, so much. I'm sure our students uh, definitely appreciated uh, your, your tips and advices. So, Um, so we have a few uh, items left uh, before we finish off. So the frequent uh, asked questions. Um, so I did a little slide on this because uh, it's common questions that I usually hear. Uh, so number one uh, would be what makes a good application? <clears throat> so you want to make sure you have uh, all the necessary information. So um, the faculty selection process is based on the students stated academic career and personal reasons for wanting to undertake law studies at a host institution, as well as the student's academic record in the faculty of law. So of course your CGPA is important, but uh, what, I f- what I think it's also very equally important is your reasons why uh, you want to uh, go on a specific uh, exchange to a specific school. So always keep that in mind um, when you prepare uh, your application. How many universities can I choose? Uh, It's a maximum of four uh, institutions. Uh, Will I get my top choice? Um, So exchange places at each destination are unfortunately limited, and there's no guarantee uh, that you will receive a nomination for your first choice. So uh, please keep your options open by considering several potential destinations. But again, um, you know, like, Uh, if you don't um, have your first choice, um, I guarantee you that um, regardless where you go, you will have a positive, uh, a positive um, outcome of your exchange experience. Uh, I've only heard positive um, uh, comments of students going on uh, an exchange in their second choice. So um, sometimes expectations, again, lead to disappointments, but at the end, uh, everything turns out uh, just the, everything turns out to be fine. So, um, so again, as Jared said, uh, please keep that flexibility uh, in mind. Uh, and lastly, how many places uh, at each partner institution? Uh, so again, that depends. Uh, so uh, please visit our uh, student uh, study away exchange um, outgoing uh, website. Uh, so you will see the number of spots uh, assigned for uh, each institution as it varies. Uh, per institution. Um, So lastly, um, the SAO advising, uh, if you have questions, uh, if there are things that remain unclear, if you want to go over on your degree audit, uh, please don't hesitate to reach us. Um, Our counter is open from Monday to Thursday from 10.30 to 2.30. 
uh, in um, New Chancellor Day Hall, fourth floor, 433. Uh, you could also email us, um, sao.lat.mcgill.ca. Um, and if you need a, uh, to book a personal appointment virtually, uh, you could always uh, book via Microsoft Teams. Um, you could just verify on our Just Ask newsletter and you'll see the link to book uh, an appointment. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, so this is a question uh, period. Uh, so I see there are a few questions, uh, I believe. Is there any questions? Yes. So. Yeah, there, there's a few, uh, Ashton. Yeah, perfect. So, um, so the first question, is there an exchange abroad that has a program specifically in human rights that, that students should consult uh, the website, right? And the uh, Yes. Um, that's what I always kind of recommend because each institution has their own um, course selection, uh, own specialization. Uh, so if you go on our website under outgoing exchanges, uh, you could click on uh, the, um, the institution and usually uh, they will mention or you will notice if they have a human rights law. Uh, if you don't find or if it's not clear enough, uh, please, uh, Laurence, uh, send me an email and uh, I, I could uh, look into it. And there's Wait, another thanks. one here. Oh, Laurence, did you want to add to that? No. But Laurence, don't hesitate. Uh, if you uh, still can't find um, an institution that has a human rights law specialization, uh, email me. I'll, I'll be happy to help. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So is fall graduating, if you are graduating, you want to complete the fall semester? I know for many schools in France, exams usually occur in January. Uh, Do you mind if I chip in there, Astrid, actually? Yes, absolutely. Uh, cool. Uh, I had that exact problem when I was in Italy in that all of the exams were supposed to be in January. Uh, what I did is I talked to my professors and they just sorted it out. Uh, and I, I took them before I left in December. I like left on like Christmas Eve and uh, I took all wow. of my exams the week before. So yeah, it was, it was, it was easy to do. You just have to it's, chat with the individual professors. Yeah. Thank you, Jared. I think that's the key thing, right? It's to, to, to plan in advance just to make sure to keep them in the loop, right? So uh, thank you, Jared. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, next question, Josie, sorry. I don't is the, uh, is the application due on the same day for law partners and McGill partners? I think we're in line with the university. Yeah, we're in line of the university. Yes, correct. Um, however, uh, for the McGill partners, uh, I, I think it's a day after uh, we the set 15th. it up for yeah. the 15th. Correct. Yes. So don't confuse. Yeah. So don't confuse the two. Friday is uh, Faculty of Law. Which is the 14 and the 15 is um, the, the general McGill partner. Yes. Yeah, we will put that all on our uh, on our website uh, just to make sure it's pretty clear. How long does the statement have to be for each school? One page. Is is that reasonable, uh, Jared Taylor Alex? Usually the yeah. One page. It's one page. From what usually. I recall. Yeah, yeah okay. what I recall, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One, okay, one page, Ashton, otherwise uh... <laughs> it's, it's going to be a, a thesis. Uh... Yes, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, what is this? Is there a list of full year exchanges available? And are we, as law students, eligible for those full year programs? I don't think so. I think it's only... Uh, uh, so for full year, I, I know some institutions do accept, but uh, Laurence, again, send me an email of those schools you're, you're interested maybe for a full year. Uh, I, uh, what I do recall, it, it depends on the institution. How flexible are the language requirements? Is oh, I think Jared, uh, Jared, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, can we rely on the column open to final semester exchange on the outgoing study exchange? Uh, so Chloe, good question. Um, so I'm revamping the website because those uh, actually that information, it's all from 2021, 2022. Uh, I've been in touch with our um, partners uh, just to make sure the information is still valid for 2022, 2023. Uh, so far, the information is accurate. 
Um, but Chloe, if there are schools that you're, you're really, really interested in, you want to make sure if it's open to final semester, uh, send me an email and I could uh, double check for you. Great, thank you. Yeah, oh, sorry, Chloe. Can we take similar classes to those we've taken? If I've taken intellectual property law, can I take another IP at the exchange school? Mm. So the answer is no. <laughs> That's the, that's the straightforward answer. However, if you're taking uh, an intellectual uh, property course that um, is specific to that region, is specific to that country, um, as opposed to the course that's offered here that's more general, uh, then we would definitely uh, take a look at the course outline and uh, assess if that course can be um, can be one of the courses you can take. Uh, so keep in mind if it's tailored to your host uh, faculty, um, we definitely take uh, a look at the course outline and it's, it really is course by course, case by case assessment. Thanks, Joseph. I can, I can jump in there too. Uh, so that happened to me actually. So I took a course, I took uh, private international law at McGill. And then there was a course in Rio that I took called uh, Privado Internacional, which is, uh, no, it was Transnational, Direito Transnacional. And then that, it was sort of overlapping. So what happened was I got the syllabus from the professor early on, and then I, uh, I had to check with my professor from McGill, and then there was kind of a comparison between the two outlines, and it was deemed that they weren't, there was not enough overlap to, to disqualify, me, disqualify me from taking it. So that's, yeah, that's, I think, I mean, and, and it did, like, it's, it was sort of related, but like not quite, but I'm not sure if there's like a, like a clear standard of what overlapping and not is. Thank you, Sarah. Are there any other questions? <laughs> well, if you have any more questions later on, um, I know the application deadline, it's a little bit more than a month after the holidays, uh, please email me or the sao.law and I'll take care of it. Um, but uh, thank you so much everyone for joining. Um, uh, I know this is exam, it's close to exam period and I uh, appreciate the attendance. Thank you, Josie. Thank you, Taylor, Jared and Alix for joining. It's, it's my first info session, so <laughs> I, I was a little bit nervous, but uh, I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the participation. Thank you. Well done, Astrid. Thank you. And thank you so much uh, for our alumni students for joining us and talking about their yes, experience. Yes, agreed. Thank you. Thank you all for taking the time, for sure. Thanks, guys. Bye, thank you. Enjoy. Bye. Uh, Ashley, I'm going to stop recording. Yeah.